Mr Dowd, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairship, and I want to thank the Honourable Member for Bexley Heath and Crayford for securing this debate. I know he's been a strong campaigner for tackling childhood obesity over many, many years, and I thank him for his remarks today. As many colleagues have rightly highlighted, the obesity epidemic is a genuine crisis. It will be the next big public health issue that we will all be talking about in a few years. 60% of us are now overweight, one in four children in England are now obese by the time they leave primary school, and it means those children are five times more likely to go on to develop serious and life-limiting diet-related conditions in adulthood like diabetes, CVD, liver disease, and certain forms of cancer. And of course, it means more pressure on the NHS, which, as we know, is already buckling under the weight of demand after years of mismanagement by this government. And it's a disaster for the taxpayer. Frontier Economics estimates the impact of obesity to be £98 billion a year in NHS and social care costs, lost productivity, workforce inactivity and welfare payments. So I want to thank many of the members today for rightly focusing their remarks on the poor food environments children are growing up in and what we as policy makers can actually do about that. In recent decades, action on obesity has overwhelmingly focused on measures to get people to change their behaviour without tackling the structural factors that influence them. And we know that isn't enough. 99% of us know that it's important to get your five a day. Most of us can tell each other what a healthy diet looks like. And every week, there seems to be some new fad diet. But the bottom line is the nation's waistline. Britain is getting fatter. It is therefore disappointing to see the Secretary of State say she believes that the priority for preventing obesity is to give people information about nutrition with no measures to fix the food environment. And it appears to be at odds with her views on tobacco, where the government rightly have taken up measures to further protect children from tobacco harm. So she does not believe measures to inform children about the dangers of tobacco alone are sufficient to solve that issue. So why does she believe this for obesity? And if giving people more information is the solution, can she explain why obesity rates are twice as high in our poorest areas than the richest? Mr Dowd, Labour believes every community in the UK should be a healthy place for children to grow up, learn and play. Businesses need a healthy workforce to drive economic productivity and sustainable growth. And it is the government's job to make the healthy choice the easy choice. There was a moment, I think, in 2020 when it looked like every party across the House believed this, when the government brought forward the 2020 obesity strategy, welcomed by doctors, parents, health cha charities, and, as the Right Honourable Member for Bexley, he said, received cross-party support, and a strategy that contained evidence-based measures to really begin to fix the food system by stopping our children being bombarded with junk food adverts as part of a major commitment to halve childhood obesity by 2030. So I'd like to ask the government today what's happened to that commitment. And since the government kicked that flagship policy into the long grass, delaying the policy for the next government to deal with in October 2025. So is the government still committed to halving childhood obesity by 2030? And what have they done since delaying the junk food advertising policies? The need for action hasn't gone away, as we've heard today. The health of our children is in a dire state, and it's getting worse. It was once thought that it was essentially impossible for children to develop type 2 diabetes so early in life as a result of their diet. But as we heard from the member for Bexley Heath and Crayford, we are now seeing thousands of cases of children developing the condition more every year. Nearly 4 in 10 children with obesity are estimated to have early stage fatty liver disease and tooth decay remains the single largest cause of hospitalisations for young children in England. And the government assures us that the regulations on junk food advertising were merely delayed to give industry more time to prepare. Why then, if this is the case, has the government refused to bring out the supporting secretary legislation for these regulations, which are now months overdue? And surely the minister agrees that it would help the industry, industry prepare for these regulations to have this detail available to them now. They will want to tackle the structural drivers of ill health and be led by evidence, not ideology. And that starts with delivering the measures that the government has failed to implement to protect children from junk food. So we will restrict adverts of foods high in fat, sugar and salt in favour of healthier options. We will improve children's diets by finally implementing the 9pm watershed for junk food advertising on television and ban paid for advertising of less healthy foods on, on, on online media. Tackling health inequalities is a central part of Labels Health mission. And we won't resort to the tired excuses that would blame families in Blackpool for having poorer health than someone in Banbury. Instead, we need to focus on making healthy food more affordable and accessible, as we've heard today. And schools will have a role and responsibility uh, within that. And that's why our fully funded breakfast clubs in every primary school in England will serve healthy and balanced food to embed healthy habits and boosting children's concentration and development. Um, 
The Minister will know that the Government uh, has undertaken some assessments of the health impacts of the National School Breakfast Programme at the time when it was running. It would be really good to hear what some of the evidence was because actually we heard from schools that it improved, it improved pupil behaviour, improved their readiness to learn, it improved social skills and eating habits. Um, and to conclude, with this, I, I want to leave you with a statistic to reflect just how stark this issue is. Not only, are four children, not only are our children fatter than their peers in other European countries, but actually they are shorter than our European peers. Thank you.